I don't know about you, but I find web hosting sites incredibly confusing. They've got these big menus with all these complicated terms like shared web hosting, managed web hosting, dedicated server hosting, WordPress hosting, cloud hosting. I mean, what's the difference? In this video, I'm gonna explain every type of web hosting to help you make a purchase decision and know what is best for you and why. Let's start off with shared hosting. This is your most basic, simple form of web hosting, and you'd see it at sites like GoDaddy, Bluehost, and Hostinger. Shared hosting is a great fit for anyone just starting out or anyone with a low to medium traffic website. It's simple, so you're not gonna have to worry about maintaining a server or having any sort of IT knowledge to get started. So shared hosting is great for someone who just needs their website to be live and they're not getting so much traffic that it's gonna be overwhelming the server. Shared hosting is essentially just a folder on a web server and a web host may have up to thousands of these folders on a single server. So in other words, you're sharing a web server with hundreds, maybe even thousands of other websites. This is great because it's affordable and your web host is responsible for maintaining the server, but it's not great in the sense that you're sharing a server with a bunch of people and if someone's website ever were to get compromised, it could potentially affect all the other websites on the server, but hopefully your web host has proper security in place so that this doesn't happen. With shared hosting, you'll always have a control panel, commonly something like cPanel, so you can upload your website files and change common settings but other than that, your web host is responsible for maintaining the web server and it's not too much work on your end to maintain. And speaking of maintenance, now's a great time to talk about managed hosting. When you're shopping for web hosting, you're gonna see the term managed use in various different places. And I wanna be clear up front, this is not a category or type of web hosting. It's not like managed hosting is its own thing and shared hosting is a different thing. Managed is basically a feature of hosting. So you could have managed shared web hosting or managed VPS hosting. Managed basically means that your web host is responsible for maintaining the server and ensuring reliability and uptime. Now, this is a little bit complicated because it means different things to different web hosts. Typically, managed hosting is gonna mean that your host is responsible for keeping the server updated, keeping it secure, and making sure that if anything were to ever go wrong and your website goes down, they're responsible for getting it back up and getting things in working order. But that doesn't mean that your website is never gonna have any problems. Like if you're using WordPress and you have a WordPress plugin that updates and breaks the entire website, well, that's not really the web host's fault. And just because you have managed hosting doesn't mean that they're gonna just fix your website every time it breaks and you're never gonna have any complications. There are different levels of managed hosting. So for example, if you've ever seen WordPress hosting as an option on a host website and you're like, what's the difference between that and shared hosting? Typically WordPress hosting is managed and the web host has a couple extra features in there like automatic WordPress plugin updates and automatic backups and extra security features to keep your WordPress site functioning. So we have a bit of extra features there that we wouldn't have in a regular managed shared hosting plan. Shared hosting is almost always gonna be some form of managed hosting and that's because you're sharing a web server with hundreds or even thousands of other websites. So your web host has to be responsible for maintaining the server and making sure it stays up for everyone. But with unmanaged hosting, you are solely responsible for the updates, maintenance, and security of your server. And trust me, unmanaged hosting is no fun. I've had it before, I've had things go wrong, and it's just a headache trying to figure out how to get the server working again. One common example of unmanaged web hosting would be a VPS server. VPS stands for Virtual Private Server, and it's exactly what the name describes. An entire virtual server to yourself that typically runs Linux or Windows. A VPS is great for hosting multiple websites because you get the value of only paying one server bill and you can host an infinite number of websites on a VPS. Remember, this is a virtual computer that you have full control over. So whether you put five websites on it or 500 websites, that's your decision. 
but do keep in mind that you can overwhelm a VPS server if you put too many websites on it. So you're gonna have to decide how many sites and how much traffic it can handle for the given specs. The possibilities with a VPS are endless. You could host a single website that you configure manually, or you could run a control panel like Plesk or cPanel to easily run multiple websites. You could even resell web hosting using cPanel on a VPS. There's so much that you can do. If you need more power and dedicated resources, that's where a dedicated server comes in. A dedicated server is basically the same as a VPS, only it's a physical server where the entire thing belongs to you. So a VPS is actually run on a dedicated server and you could have multiple VPSs hosted on that dedicated server. With a dedicated server, you have the entire thing to yourself itself. All of the RAM, all of the CPU power, all of the disk space, it all is available for you to utilize. A dedicated server is arguably less flexible than a VPS because it's a lot more difficult to upgrade the RAM or the CPU. In most cases, if you outgrow a dedicated server, you either rent a second one or you upgrade and move all your files over to one that's more powerful. Where with a VPS, you can just scale up and add more RAM or add more storage at any time. But but a dedicated server has the advantage of being completely isolated. With shared hosting, VPS hosting, and even cloud hosting, which we'll talk about later, other people's files are always going to be on the same server as yours. But with a dedicated server, there is complete hardware isolation, ensuring that only your files are ever going to run through that piece of hardware. Dedicated servers are great for power users who demand generous specs from their hosting. Software startups or bigger companies who can justify the cost and need the power. And they're also great for hosting games servers. It's a very common and popular use for dedicated servers. If you need that isolation and you don't want anyone else's files to ever be on the same server as yours, a dedicated server is for you. But it's definitely not for beginners and it's definitely not something you want to get to tinker around unless you're an enthusiast and in that case you probably already know what a dedicated server is. Next I want to talk about cloud hosting and I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, isn't any form of web hosting cloud hosting? Isn't cloud just another term for web server? And you'd be correct, so don't ask me why the entire web hosting industry decided that this category of hosting is referred to as cloud hosting, but that's the way it is, and this term was really started by the AWS movement. AWS, or Amazon Web Services, is an enterprise cloud hosting platform used by startups like Netflix, Twitter, and Adobe. Amazon rethought the way that these software platforms were hosted by introducing the concept of isolating and compartmentalizing different aspects of the hosting. Let's imagine for a second that Twitter could be hosted on a dedicated server. In reality, it would require hundreds or thousands of dedicated servers with how popular Twitter is, but let's just pretend for a second that it could be hosted on one dedicated server. We would begin to reach bottlenecks in different areas. The dedicated server would need a ton of storage for all of the profile pictures and photos that people post to Twitter, but maybe it wouldn't need as much CPU usage for the amount of traffic that Twitter gets. Well, that's where cloud hosting comes into play because they have different services like an app service, which could host the website files for Twitter, storage buckets, which could store all the photos and profile pictures and file uploads that users are gonna put on Twitter and it can scale infinitely, and then you could also have database hosting that can store all the tweets for Twitter. Basically, cloud hosting introduced scalability and flexibility to tech startups, so that way if their particular platform needed a ton of storage space, they could do that through the storage buckets. Or if they had this massive database, but they didn't need as much power for their actual web page, they could do that with cloud hosting. Instead of needing a dedicated server or a bunch of dedicated servers where some of the resources are getting wasted, cloud hosting allows you to pinpoint and target exactly which area of your website needs the most power and use the services to get the power that you need without wasting resources. Cloud hosting is definitely the most flexible form of hosting, but the costs add up quickly and it takes a lot to manage. Whether you're using AWS, Google Cloud Platform, or Microsoft 
Azure, cloud hosting is a beast of its own, and I generally wouldn't recommend it unless you're an enthusiast or you know that you need the power and flexibility of cloud hosting and you're tech savvy or you have someone on your team who is able to handle it. Personally, most of my websites are hosted on managed shared hosting, and if you're wondering which web hosts I recommend, I have an entire comparison video on that here.